My life. I'm supposed to make a diary documentary about what I do and who I am. Why am I doing this documentary? For one, it's a class assignment. But another reason why I want to do it is because I just love filmmaking. Everything about it. There's just something magical about it that is drawn to me. And this diary documentary, um, I wouldn't say my life is extremely crazy, but I feel like I'm pretty entertaining. And well, welcome to my life. I can wait till winter's over with goodbye to go. All the time we spent together chasing parts of gold. And you can find us adventures until the day is done. I'll be the one to run back and carry you All right, you're on camera. It's cold. I work for a company called Air Advantage. And what we are, we are a wireless internet company that uh, provides high-speed wireless internet in rural areas. Hey, you know what would be crazy? What? You know what would be crazy if I like fell? You know, I got it on camera. <laughs> I think on the way to our next job, I'm just gonna have you put together a Yagi. Yeah, just in case. Yeah, just do it inside the truck. That's what's what. That way it's warm. It's not bad. In the winter time, it's horrible because <laughs> it's cold. I hate the cold as it is. It's snowing decently. I guess we're gonna get about two inches. It's about 23 degrees out for 12, according to my laptop. So, it's actually worse. But, I'll be come back inside this truck so we can warm up. Uh, how you doing, man? Good. Good? So, when I'm working at Air Advantage, I have to work with a uh, partner. You know, it's a two-man team. Well, Jesse and I are stuck right now in the transit. We had a nice ice storm last night. I knew I shouldn't have gone down this road. The only way you can get in is through the window. Lots of fun, isn't it, Jesse? Yeah. There's one guy named Jesse. Jesse McKelvey. He's a big enthusiast of hockey. This guy, he plays hockey. He'll go play in the pier at the, the Polar Palace. Um, he'll go down to Rochester. There's an uh, ice rink down there. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it's actually pretty cool. I visited, visited him down there and watched him play. He's a great skater, in my opinion. I, you know, I can't skate, so I wouldn't really, really know. You know, he, because he's a big fan of hockey, he always goes over to Canada. And my, a lot of the main reasons he goes over to Canada is because he's really into the band Rush. No surprise, right?
<laughs> yep. That guy just blew by that stop sign. Alright, I'm at Ryan's house. He doesn't know that I'm gonna bring the camera in, so we'll see what happens with him. He can, uh, he's a very interesting guy. Expensive. It was about two hundred dollars for that thing. It looks like two hundred dollars. Yeah. Anyway, I smacked two hundred dollars on the table right now. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Well, that many buttons. <laughs> yep. Uh, dude, nice tall glasses here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cheers, man. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Ryan Rowe has been my friend since like the fourth grade, all the way back to the ele elementary school. Uh, I met him through playing Pokemon cards. Uh, you know, come to find out he had that card, I had this card, and we traded and we became friends. That's how it was back in the 90s. It was great. Jesse and I, because I work with Jesse M now, yeah. we went to this guy's house, mm. and the guy was growing medical marijuana in his house. Really? As soon as you freaking open the door, <laughs> that skunky weed smell, you know? Oh, just my hits God. Your nose. Oh, my God. It was, and, look, and what's funny is that we went there, like, a couple weeks ago to upgrade him, but he wasn't at home. Mm -hmm. We're outside the door, I'm like... The hell is that? That's like a skunk, you know. And I didn't even think weed. I don't yeah. know why. You don't, you don't think someone just growing it right no. there? No. It's not the first thing that comes to your mind. Damn, dude, you reek of weed. Do I? Oh, it's crap. It's dude, crazy. Oh, that's not good. Well, it's probably because you just you carried it out with you. Well, so, do we smell like weed? Mmm. We don't know until you. Somebody else tells you. That's the thing about weed. Yeah, I hope you guys were high, knowing our luck. Yeah. We're like. Got some explaining to do, huh? No, we weren't doing that. We went to a guy's house. Yeah, he's going to make me want to. That'd be tough to explain. And turns out the guy was a medical marijuana grower. As soon as we walk in, as soon as we walk in, he goes, Just to let you guys know, I'm a medical marijuana grower, so don't freak out about all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I can smell it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. I'm like, no, I can smell it. And you're high as a mo If you guys don't feel comfortable coming in, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm fine. How about you show me? <laughs> So he did. He actually showed me. He's got one plant in this there, and then he's got like three other ones just by themselves. And the yeah. one was pretty much like a week away from being harvested. Oh, really? So the buds were on there nice and big. Mm -hmm. Probably as big as like my keychain, pretty much. Oh, yeah. And it was beautiful. <laughs> that plant turned out to be a busted coil spring. Yeah. And we can't get the tire back on with that spring in the way. All right, well, I changed, uh, got my car back, and I uh, changed out the struts, and hopefully it'll run great. I'm about to do a test drive right now, and yeah, it should be good. I did a pretty damn good job. It drives great. I'm impressed with myself. Whew. I was not ready to spend two hundred dollars plus on labor just to get that installed. So YouTube, everything from now on. Now I can actually go back to the apartment and not be stuck at my parents' house too. As much as I love them, it's always good to go back to my normal life. Although the free food does does rule. Nico, 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 Nick, Nicholas, yeah, I call him Nico, that's how I put him on the phone, Nick. Um, he is an aspiring electronic artist from like the metro Detroit area, so Rochester. I met him, in, he lives in Rochester, and he does a lot of dubstep style music. Where'd you find this? <laughs> Within 30 seconds of meeting this woman on a train, he pretty much solidifies the fact that he's going to be banging her tonight. <laughs> I met him through one of 
his previous events, I wanted to help out with it. And they were putting on a show in Pontiac at the Crowfoot. Um, it was called Get the Bass. And I'm just thinking, you know what? Maybe what if I just message them on the Facebook event or the page? And, you know, if they say no, then they say no. But so I did. The next day, he messaged me through Facebook and he started asking me if, if I wanted to film at the concert. And I said, yeah. And it just took off from there. might as well do something even if you don't think it's going to turn out good or even if you're worried about it, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day you either did it or you didn't do it and if you didn't do it, there's no chance for it to possibly come out well. There's no chance for anything. True. You learn. You learn from what you experience. As Maddie said, a closed, I don't know, I don't know where we got it from, but a closed mouth doesn't get fed. There you go. You miss. 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> if I drop this, it's gonna break. Please don't tell me. I mean, I just, I just, I, I want to be able to wear it right here, but I don't want to damage it. I got to know him after the concert, um, just by small talk, and just kind of laid out the idea that I want to do a photo shoot for him so he can do, he can put it onto his EP album. It depends on if I can just like crack down these next couple weeks, not go out, I'll have it done, no problem. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did a Skrillex tribute that I'm going to drop soon. Mm. Oh, I yeah. knew. Did you upload this yet? No. No? I'm saving it. I'm saving it for when I drop the EP. Because so, I know I have a feeling it'll, it'll go over for a Okay. <laughs> so it's a preview. Yeah. Uh -oh. No. It sucks. I have an exam tomorrow. I've got an exam Monday on uh, screenwriting. So... I gotta know all my terms for that. Nice. Yeah, so awesome. as you can tell, we are in the complete opposite fields right now. Making this diary documentary has kind of exposed me to the idea of doing documentaries by yourself and how challenging and yet rewarding it can be. I mean, yeah, you're, you kind of rely on yourself to point the camera. You can't really find somebody to hold the camera and record yourself all the time. but. It's more of a learning experience as you go, too. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, so this documentary is more about my life right now. Uh, a lot of lessons to be learned. I can't wait to keep going on in this and I'm extremely excited just to be done with uh, this program and, and, and be able to expand on more things so I can have more time to do it. And film for me is the best thing that, that's happened. I came into this program thinking I was going to be a networking engineer and make a bunch of money and just program servers and be able to do all that stuff, but I found that my hobby, which was film, outweighed that passion more than networking. I'm in a great place right now. I'm around a lot, around a lot of great people that I care about and they care about me and they enjoy and respect my work. So, so far, film, everything about it, I just love. And when I look back on this, I can't wait to see what accomplishments I've done.